Well, this is Kurt Beatty, and this is another one of our mocks, and this is um, new for this year, 2017, and I have modeled the antikythera mechanism. Now, uh, there's a bit of a story there, and I actually gave a talk yesterday about it, and there's a full slide deck here on the, for the talk, and um, there's a wonderful Nova episode, if you, if you pan that, there's, you can type um, Ancient Computer Nova or Antikythera Mechanism Nova into Google and go to videos and you'll find this Nova and I recommend you watch this Nova on the Antikythera. It's all about ancient Greek history and science and mathematics and astronomy and it's just really good nerd food. <laughs> you know, so you, you're going to just like totally nerd out on it. And what this is, is, is a, it, it, it calculates, it can, it, the net result is you can predict and calculate eclipses. So, um, and then there's a wonderful video that came out. That, that NOVA came out in 2013. Um, the, the recent research started coming out after 2006 on it when they did high-resolution x-rays. And the, uh, the uh, um, Andy Carroll, who's a, Andrew Carroll, he's a brilliant designer. Um, he did the Babbage engine. He's done uh, um, a programmable plotter out of Lego. And he built this, uh, an Antikythera mechanism. And all props to Andy, um, he used seven differentials. And now what's really interesting is the, the, the original mechanism it has the very first differential known of. I mean, you know, the surviving mechanism has a differential in it. And it's the differential to make the moon phase, and I can show you that. Andy used seven differentials because he didn't have odd-numbered tooth, you know, prime, odd prime numbered tooth counts of big gears. So um, he did that, and he has a video about that. That's a really cool video. I recommend you watch. Just type Andy Kithra Mechanism Lego, and like the first hit will be Andy, a video about Andy's creation. He also has a website devoted to it that has the math, and it has these face um, spiral diagrams on it and everything else. And this caused a lot of excitement. And then a fellow named Sean Tur Sheen Turner who goes by Will Pilgrim on Rebrickable, he reverse engineered, which was a hell of a job. He reverse engineered Andy's machine, which Andy shows a video. There's a couple of videos of it and a number of photographs. And he reverse engineered that and made a 227 page LPUB document <laughs> to build one, which is yeah, all props to him. That's a pretty incredible yeah. thing. I mean, I think it was less work for me to build my my var variation on it was than it was for him to design the thing to match Andy's. Um, so what I was interested in, and then, and, and then another person uh, came along and, and wanted to put the lunar phase indicator in. Um, and, and so he mentioned it before me and I mentioned it. I never saw his photograph till after I was done and had mine working, but I did find a photograph of his, which I thought was interesting to see what he did. Mm -hmm. So here's the math and, uh, and the ancient Greeks, and I, you can't really say discovered, it's more directly they measured. They counted how long it was before things repeat. And over a tropical year, they discovered these two ratios, because they didn't have fractions. So they discovered these two ratios closely match. And they closely match by one part in 100. This is percent. One part in 10,000. One part in 1,000. One part in 10,000. One part in 100,000. 1 1.4 parts per 100,000 accuracy is the ratio of 254 divided by 19 for calculating how many sidereal months there are in a year. Well, sidereal months is the speed the moon moves around the Earth, as viewed by the Earth. The real moon actually travels in synodic months. And you say, well, why is it one more? You notice the, the fraction is the same, but it's one larger because the Earth moves one orbit and the moon is chasing it. So the moon starts here, he goes around, and he doesn't go back to the same spot, he has to go a little further. Okay. So he loses one month over the course of the year. He goes around one extra time because he's chasing the bloody earth around the sun. So, so those two numbers are critically important and that's what Andy's mechanism modeled, was just this math here. And then he computes the sorrow cycle and the pointer into the sorrow cycle. So, so I basically took Andy's math and, and with Andy's dial outputs and figured out what I could do if I printed my own gears to avoid putting differentials in, because the original had a differential, but it was only for the lunar phase, and I wanted the lunar phase. And so I designed and printed custom LEGO gears 
uh, Lego compatible gears, and I had them printed at Shapeways. And so my first efforts were pretty pathetic, as you might well imagine. They were triangular gear teeth like the original bronze one has, but we'll get on to that in a moment. So I, I had to print, I had to design four designs and make two copies of one of them. I had to do two 19 tooth gears, a 47 tooth gear, a 127 tooth gear, and a 223 tooth gear. I then printed them. And my 222 gear came back like, like a potato chip. So I had to give it a stress-relieving bath in hot water for about six hours to, to get it to mellow out yeah. and be, be flat. So it was kind of an adventure. So then I went ahead and built this. And so you can see the gears on the back of it. Here we go. And, uh, and pretty cool mechanism. You can see I managed to flatten that. And it does an interesting thing. It can, so here it is on like uh, uh, um, J January 1st, 2017, and I'm going to turn the little crank over here, and we're going to watch, and it, it predicts here in about seven days, there'll be a full moon. See the moon phase? The Earth's in the middle, sun's over there, moon's on that side, sun shines, we see it come back, looks like the full moon. So we'll crank it forward some more. And what we're looking for is an interesting thing will occur in this lunation period right here. So we're marching forward to that lunation. So we're cranking into August and we enter that lunation. And when we get to the new moon, so here's the Earth. The moon is in front of the sun. Well, the moon looks like a new moon, but because this lunation period says there's a solar eclipse, we can see on the computer here, it's a, and this is a mechanical computer. I mean, this is the first computer. It's the first mechanical computer. It says there's going to be a total eclipse of the sun on January 21st, 2017. And I'm going to go on record with that, mostly because I know that it's really <laughs> happening. And I actually calibrated the machine so that it would you know, come out. You know, you have to get all the dials yeah. moving at the same speed. So, so, yes, in fact, it predicts eclipses. And the Greeks did this somewhere between 2100 and 2200 years ago. Wow. And I reproduced it in Lego. And you can see Andy Carroll's machine is really, it's deep and big. And he goes to all that work because he did it in a pure Lego solution, which had to use differentials to perform subtractions in order to get around the fact that Lego doesn't have 223 tooth gears. Right. <laughs> so you, know, you can argue his is a pure solution, it's better, but mine's actually closer to what the original does. Well. Andy stopped there, and I duplicated his effort in this much smaller form, but I wanted to go, out. so I have several problems. My teeth that I printed are triangles. They're not involute teeth. Well, um, if you type involute gear or involute teeth, they'll, there's a, this is a, a GIF, and it will run, and you can see what an involute tooth is. Well, Lego gear, almost all modern gears, including Lego gears, are involute teeth. And it is the continuous motion force application thing. And they, they're specified by angle. And Lego gears are the most common angle, 20 degrees. So I, did, I found a, a subroutine for SCAD that did involute teeth correctly. I scaled them to the right size. I figured out how to put them together. And I and designed, and this is rendered, you know, this is designed with the tools. In the 3D tools, exported back into, L, into LDRAW and then rendered with the, the, the ray tracer. And so you can see this lovely 47 tooth gear being turned by a 19 tooth gear. And they have involute shaped teeth, okay? And that's matching Lego teeth. And, and so that's pretty cool. You might, uh, a, a sharp Technic user would say, well, hey, Kurt, how did you know it was gonna be four over and one down? You know, how did you know that those gears are gonna mesh like that? Well, I wrote a spreadsheet well, first we'll do a little lesson on, on, on Lego dimensions here. And there's a wonderful web website here. It has lots of things on dimensions. And, and, and the key word is rolling diameter of a gear. So up here, when these two gears mesh, you can see the center line kind of in the middle of the tooth. That's the rolling diameter of this gear, and that's the rolling diameter of the other gear. And so the rolling diameter of a gear is the diameter of an idealized disc that allows it to roll on equivalent ideal dice disc of the other gear that it's normally meshing with. And they don't have to be the same size disc, but then you have two different rolling diameters. 
So when you, and then in Lego gears, they have this key characteristic. Rolling diameter in millimeters of any Lego gear is the same as the number of its teeth. I don't know whether you knew that. I did not. Yeah, well, you know, a 24 tooth gear takes three Lego studs. Did you know that? Okay. Three Lego studs, because stu Lego studs are eight millimeters apart. Three times eight is 24. So that's, in fact, the rolling diameter of, of a 24 tooth gear is, in fact, 24 millimeters. Okay. So given that the circumference of a rolling disc is pi d, you know, any disc, the circle, pi times its diameter, and where d is the number, but d is the same as the number of teeth. If you take the circumference and divide it by the number of teeth, you get pi d over d which means each Lego tooth is pi millimeters long. So you, that's why Lego seems so simple when you put it together, because they hid the pi. You don't have to worry about it, it's in the tooth spacing. So a Lego gear teeth are spaced on the circumference or, or in a rack, in a straight line, exactly 3.14159 millimeters long. Okay. So, so with that thing, you can make a spreadsheet and you can calculate meshing two gear teeth, in, put in any number here and here, and my spreadsheet will compute what the meshing dimensions are to the nearest half stud. So it looks in here and I say it's 4-1. That's how I knew. I plugged in my numbers and my spreadsheet told me the answer. So I have spreadsheets like this. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. So the 3D dual chain that allowed me to do all this is the Eldorado dual chain. And in LD view, when you export, you can export an STL file. That's the stereo lithography file. That's the three-dimensional file. So you can get DAT files for any of your standard Lego parts. They're up on, well, they now are kind of compressed in a form for the uh, for uh, 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 downloading the whole Eldra. But you can go to their website and pull down any individual parts DAT file. You can read that DAT file into MLCAD and see all the subparts of a part. Well. If you write that out or open that file with LD view, if you want to modify it, you can export it as an STL file. That STL file can be printed, 3D printing. Um, there are some issues. LDRAW is wonderful, but it's made to render fast, and the, the, there's, not enough, uh, there's not enough triangles. Right. It's, it's, it's rough when you see it. You need to actually add more. So, there's a great tool called OpenSCAD. It's not Lego specific, but you can do Lego stuff in it, and you can learn how to do that, you know, by playing the tool chain. And people are writing programs to do Lego-like things in OpenSCAD. And you can scale anything in OpenSCAD to be Lego dimensions if you want. But you, you know, again, you have to go back and learn what Lego dimensions are, how big a hole really is, not the idealized size of a hole. And you go through all this work, and then you can edit it with a 3D editor. And these are just a free tool chain. It's all free. And then there is a tool that will take things you spill out of OpenSCAD, which makes very clean STL files, and you can transport it with a Python script back to a DAT file. So you have bi-directional input and output from the 3D tools back in and out of, so you can do instructions. So I'm able to print out instruction-like objects for things and import parts and have parts that are not standard Lego parts, but are the custom parts I'm building. So I can do normal uh, uh, L pubs and stuff like that with them. So I wanted to do the pin and slot mechanisms like the real Andy Kithra device. And so I had to do more gears. So these were the original four designs, and I did six more designs. And the net result is just like the original on the back side on the 223 tooth gear, the pin and slot mechanism that does the non-constant angular motion of the moon. And if we watch over here, when I crank this, you can see the pin and slot gear tracking around. And that does the non-constant angular motion of the moon. That means it models the ellipse, but the Greeks didn't know about ellipses. They just knew the moon moved slower at some times than it did at other times. They could observe it. And they modeled it by a circle on a circle. And you'll notice the 223 tooth gear is moving very slowly while that's happening. Well. You say, well, why would they mount it out there? Because it moves. Well, in fact, that does another thing. This 223 tooth gear is moving exactly the speed necessary to account for the precession of the lunar apsides. Because the, while it's doing orbits, it's not doing the orbit in the same place. The moon is slowly processing, and that's called the precession of the lunar apsidial precession. 
and that speed is 8.8529 tropical years. And the math of that is that. And that 53 tooth gear was in the original Annie Kither mechanism. They didn't understand why it was there for the longest time. The mathematicians look at it and they said, why is there this other prime number? We don't understand where this 53 comes from. And the answer is it comes from making this big gear that, we that they epicyclically mounted these pin and tooth gears on turn at the right speed to account for the lunar apsites. And now I've built parts to model in this more advanced model exactly that phenomena. So, pretty intense. I highly recommend this talk by Dr. Freeth. And now we're catching up. I mean, we're close to reality here. This was published, he gave this talk 11-6-2015. This is 2017. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm right up to the, to the latest work on it, you know what I mean? And I'm building it out of Lego. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And, uh, and it's green because it's supposed to be corroded bronze. Okay. <laughs> So I use lots of green Lego gears and stuff in there. Some of them are kind of rare parts, but I, I was kind of cool. I what the hell. <laughs> so, yeah, that is a fascinating project. So much detail and research there. I love that. <laughs>